deep, looking for Greenwood. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Hand off. Turbin trying to get to the corner. Not going to be able to do it. The Ram defense gets the stop. Welcome to the Ram Report with Steve Fairchild. Looking at a fire deep, has a man wide open. It's Kaufman out at the 30 yard line. He makes a diving catch. Hello and welcome inside the Ram Report. Sitting in for Brian Roth this week, I'm Kevin McLue, joined by the head coach of the CSU Ram football team, Steve Fairchild. And Steve, uh, despite a, a very close loss at home last Saturday, I would imagine you're very proud of the way that your kids came out and played. Great intensity from wire to wire. They made plays, came up just a bit short, but I would imagine all in all, as a coach, you have to be thrilled with the way that your guys came out and approached that game. I, I really was. I, you know, we were all disappointed, uh, as we should be, in the, in the locker room afterwards. But uh, I did spend some time talking about how proud I was of, of our football team because I thought we played with, like you said, great effort. I thought we were a very, very physical football team. Uh, we kind of did what we set out to do in terms of the tactical part of the game. We shut down the run, got a little run game going ourselves, and uh, just didn't quite play well enough to win. And you knew it was going to be tricky uh, from the time you, you drove up to the stadium when you saw the 70-mile-an-hour yeah. winds whipping around. You know, I couldn't believe it. I, I, you know, we, the wind played a factor. I don't know if it was much of, of a factor as, as you'd think, but it was, it was big in the kicking game. And, uh, you know, we, we obviously uh, got the ball but had to kick in the second half. And I walked out, and the wind was blowing one way, so I said we'll kick that direction. And uh, by the by the started the half it had switched and we were going into the win so it was it was tricky but uh, you know nonetheless give San Diego State their due they played a good game. Well let's take a look at some of those highlights from a great game last Saturday between CSU and San Diego State. Colorado State going with a little no huddle here. Toss sweep okay running to the left side as the wall set up. Got a field to 30, 35, 40. Near side and got his pins undercut. First and 10 at six from the 34. Seven step drop for Lindley. Fires up the middle ball deflected intercepted. Mike Carrasco adds it at the 41. He's dropped immediately, and that Ram defense comes up with the first big play of the afternoon. Two first and ten from the 37. Back to the ground game and back to Woke. Left side broke attack to the 40 45 midfield. Down the far sideline, foot race 30 to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. Five touchdown, Colorado State. And Chris Woke breaking that first line of defense. Back down and on from the 39-yard line. Hillman over the left side to the big pop as he got to the 38-yard line. Back down and six. The Rams from their own 13. Toss sweep to the right side. Chris Wolke broke a tackle out to the 20. 25 still on his feet far side on 35-40. Wolke to midfield. Broke a tackle at the 40. Still on his feet at the 30. Cuts back to the 25. Wolke finally brought down all the way at the 20-yard line going to go for the shotgun. Empty set here. Third and six. Here comes the blitz. Grayson rolling out to his right. Fires. He found Gilmore at the 40. Out to the 45. To the 47. Yeah. It'll be third and a yard to go. Quarterback sneak and a big push by that offensive line. Grayson again under center. Again quarterback sneak. Is he in? Touchdown Colorado State. High step line. Grayson is going from under center. Grayson to throw. Grayson has some time. Grayson steps up. Grayson trying to dive into the end zone. He goes! Two-point conversion for CSU. And we're tied at 15. Here with time. 45 to go in the fourth. He's missed two tonight. Staff is good. Perez kicks it away. It is up. It is good. Well, a close affair that came up just short for Colorado State, but again, a hard-fought effort for the Rams and really one of those names that jumps out for you in his performance on Saturday, Chris Woke. A phenomenal effort by the line up front, but Chris Woke seemed like he ran harder and harder as that game went on. Yeah, he did, and, and he's coming into his own this season. You know, you've been seeing him get a little bit better each game and uh, had a tremendous outing Saturday against San Diego State, which traditionally is a tough team to run the football on. Uh, our line did a nice job. They got him started, but boy, I was, it was a thing of beauty watching Chris finish those runs. Just his pad level and acceleration into contact was something special. A lot of challenges out there and the fact that you had to deal with that wind. Uh, you also had to deal with your starting quarterback going down in that game. Uh, kind of give us a feel of where Pete Thomas is at right now. And also Garrett Grayson, his performance there as a uh, redshirt freshman coming in. Well, Pete uh, sprained his knee. Uh, a lot like Paul Madsen did in the Boise game. He's going to be out, you know, we're saying day to day, but he's going to be out for a, a period of time. How long, we don't know. 
Uh, but we'll see more, you know, as we get going through the week. Uh, I thought Garrett did a nice job. You know, you can really only get one quarterback ready in a game plan. The other guy's kind of an understudy. And so when you have to throw your backup quarterback in, it's, uh, you know, it can be challenging to say the least. But uh, I thought Garrett uh, was not phased. The game wasn't too big. He was very calm. I really liked his demeanor. You have so many things to manage during a football game and in preparation for that. Uh, and then you have to manage who has a red shirt on and, and do yeah. I want to burn a red shirt? And I know you've been getting that question a lot here, but uh, that was a decision you had to make with Garrett. Kind of give us uh, your thoughts well, and going into that. You know, I would have liked to have redshirted him. And, and there's still time. You know, you look back when I was a long time ago when I was a player here, I redshirted my fourth year. So that's still a possibility to get some separation between him and Pete. But, uh, you know, Garrett and I and, and Coach Wilkinson have had a lot of conversations about this. and. Uh, you know, football's about the team and not about what's best for Garrett or myself or whoever. And uh, just felt like at that point in time, you know, it was best for the team for him to go in. It gave us the best chance to win. Now, we'll, I'm committed to playing Garrett. Even if Pete comes back, we're going to play Garrett in every game. Well, uh, again, it was a very, very entertaining game there on Saturday and a lot of good building blocks for what's coming up later this week as CSU hits the road to take on the TCU Horn Frogs fresh off a win at Boise State last Saturday. We'll talk much more with Rams head coach Steve Fairchild after this timeout. Back after this on the Ram Report. Up here, there's something that makes the remarkable an inspirational thing. Taking our work with this out of the lab and putting it into these all over the world. Chasing tornadoes from the shadow of the Rockies. A special sensitivity that revolutionized an industry. All of this in a great Colorado town. It's an exciting place to live and learn! Colorado State University. Inspiration happens on higher ground. Twitter is great. Here's one. That darn cat is in the tree again. Where's a seven-footer when I need one? Here, kitty kitty, come on. Heard you looking for a seven-footer. Wow, Coach Miles, this is crazy. I just tweeted that. Trevor, you got this? Yes, sir. Yeah, he's more of a dog guy. This ought to do the trick. OK, thanks. That's what we're here for. Go Rams. Welcome back to the Ram Report as we continue to visit with CSU head football coach Steve Fairchild. We'll get some locker room reaction here in just a moment, but give me your reaction, the reaction from this coaching staff where, uh, yeah, it was a loss. It was a, a tough one to drop there, very close game back and forth. But again, you had so many positives coming out of that game that you can build on now as, again, you know what the uh, what the situation is. You want to well, go win three football games. Yeah, and, and, and I think just thought the coaching staff, myself, uh, everybody just feels great about these kids because they really do care. They're playing hard. It's a great group and really a fun team to coach, and we'll bounce back from this. Let's take a look at some of that post-game reaction as we head inside the Rams locker room. We are set for college football. Here from Fort Collins, Rams with the gold pants, the green jerseys, gold numbers. Okay, left side broke the tackle, 40, 45 midfield. Down the far sideline, foot race 30, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, five, touchdown! Great holes, offensive linemen, wide receivers, everybody did their part and they blocked phenomenal. Without those holes, you know, I definitely wouldn't have been in that position, so I'll give credit to my offensive line. Broke a tackle at the 40, still on his feet at the 30, cuts back to the 25. Woke K finally brought down. Had some jitters at the start of the game, but I mean, after that first drive, and Woke helped me out a lot, obviously, running, having a running back like that. That helps you out a lot and helps your confidence. Garrett Grayson in there at quarterback for CSU. Looking to set up the screen. Now he's under pressure. Grayson tries to sneak out of the pocket. He lost the football. Obviously the fumble, I just, he put the hat on the ball and it was just a good play by him. And that's a mistake that I got to correct, but I can't have that happen. They bring five, Lindley slant pattern across the middle. Incomplete. Shaq Bell had the coverage. I thought the effort was good. I mean, we played hard, competed in uh, every, uh, position, but we just uh, have to get uh, get the offense back on the field and, you know, uh, don't be on defense as much. Nothing there, and down he goes, Shaquille Barrett. Just sometimes, you just, guys don't rule our way sometimes, but we need to just put it in a better situation so we don't need a break. We just we just need to get up in the scoreboard and hold them so one play won't change the game. The final score here this evening at San Diego State 18, Colorado State 15. 
Some thoughts there from the Rams after that loss to the Aztecs on Saturday. And uh, Steve, you had a chance to address the team. And, and one thing that really impresses me about your squad is it seems like everyone is still buying into the fullest. They say, look, let's go out, let's win three football games, let's get to a bowl game. It really a good attitude, and, and without a doubt, I'm, I'm sure our football team will continue to play as hard as they have down the stretch here. And like I said, a really, really good group of kids. Uh, one of those uh, great kids that's a part of this lineup. Uh, one of those players, again, who has uh, been so good on the field, but also a wonderful student off the field and in the classroom. It's a young business student in Jake Godowski, as we'll take a look at a day in the life in this week's player profile with Jake Godowski. Football's been great because it lays the base down for your work ethic and your accountability. When you say you're going to get something done, you know, you just do it now. It's not like, oh, I might do it. You know, with football, you have to do it. So that transfers over in the classroom where if you have an assignment, I'm going to get this done. And it definitely uh, teaches you the work ethic that is needed in the classroom. Some of the former football players told me, hey, you got to be part of the business school. It's, it's one of the top schools and part of CSU. So I looked into it and I really liked it. You know, all the teachers are so helpful. You can go up to them after class anytime you want and they want to see you get better and get smarter. This is uh, real estate market analysis with uh, Dr. LaPosa. That's definitely a special opportunity. I don't take it for granted. It's um, It's been a great four years and to finish it off with Dr. LaPosa's capstone and uh, market analysis case study is just, it's been great. You, you would normally go across the street and take a picture this way so you get the full. Okay. So We're really taking a building that uh, was recently bought by a bank and basically coming up with what the value is based on the market as a whole with supply and demand and uh, what's happening with uh, rents and everything. I'm working with uh, First Bank. It's interesting and uh, they've been great over there. They've been helpful. We can really provide them with the highest and best use for the property. When you look at properties now, I look at it in a completely different fashion and you know, can this be developed? Is there, is there potential here? You can have a case study that I can present to someone and say, hey, you know, this is what I've done, and it's something I can put my name on and show future employers that this is what I can do. The college business is a really competitive school, and you're working a lot in teams too, which has been great because you work in a team on the field. You got to get together and rally behind each other to get get what you want done. So you really got to make sure everyone's accountable for what they're doing, and you got to check up on each other, and you got to really care for your teammates in the business school and then on the field too, especially because, you know, that's ultimately what happens in the, in the final result is how your team plays. Well, one of those outstanding student athletes that truly uh, shows and exemplifies that moniker of student athlete. And I know that's something that this coaching staff has been big on and Jake, uh, really one of the finest examples of that. He is, he's a, you know, he's an outstanding football player, but uh, really takes care of business in the classroom. Going to have a great uh, career after football, as you can tell. And uh, you know, he was a defensive lineman when I got here, and I called him in my office and said, "We're going to move you to offensive line." He looked shocked at me, but uh, I think he and I both know that was the right thing to do. Well, again, we talked about a big test coming up here as uh, you head on the road to TCU. It's a team that's fresh off that big win up at Boise State that a lot of people had their head turned toward after uh, the contest wrapped up on Saturday, a big upset. But uh, now you have to go in there and, and you have to be the giant killer. Your thoughts and, and how do you do that? Well, I think, you know, obviously TCU is a very good football team and I, I'm not even sure that was much of an upset. Uh, I thought that was two good football teams playing up in Boise and uh, Gary Patterson's squad found a way to win a tight game, but uh, you know TCU is what we want to be here at Colorado State. You know they're the top of the conference uh, year in year out. They're they're competitive, and uh, you know we're aspiring to do that. And until we can knock a team like that off, uh, we're going to be climbing the ladder. Does what happened last Saturday make you feel even better though about your odds on Saturday down at TCU? Well, I think they're you know they're much like Boise. They're a very talented football team, and it'll take our best to to beat them. But I think our kids are fired up. You know, one thing about this football team, other than Boise, we've uh, played with everybody uh, that we've come against, and I don't think we lack confidence in that regard. All right. So after the break, we'll talk Legends Week, and we'll talk about Steve Bartolo, who highlights the Legends Week coming up here at Colorado State University. All that and much much more coming up right here on the Ram Report.